All right. Welcome to Palm Springs, California. Um, I know very little about this place, except that it's like an hour from my house. And in the summer, it is excruciatingly hot. <laughs> um, but it's winter now. And you know it's winter because it is, let's see, two, about 2.30, and we got maybe an hour of daylight left. Gosh, or less. Because um, there's a huge mountain here that runs right alongside of the, the city. And um, so it already gets dark in this area around 4 p.m. So probably here, all the direct sunlight's gone by two or three. Pretty crazy. Anyway, there's a bunch of homes. Like, I'll try and not talk too much when the cars are passing so you can still hear me. But this area is full of, I guess what's called mid-century modern, mid-century modern architecture. And I thought I would uh, show up here and take some photos. I'm using the Lumix G7 camera I've had for ages and ages, which just keeps keeps delivering for me, even though I bought it used, you know, four or five years ago. If I take it out and, and take some photos, and um, I don't know, like I've never really shot a suburban neighborhood before, so we'll see how that goes, but. Supposedly there's like architecture walking tours and stuff through here, so should be some some nice stuff. We'll see how the light is. And I thought I would take you along for the for the journey. And let's see what we can find. Probably going to be some pretty long gaps between photos here because there's kind of a lot of going to be a lot of walking today. Get my steps in. Unfortunately, I can't give you a, uh, you know, lots of interesting historical facts about the architecture here because I don't know anything about architecture, <laughs> except, that I, except that I like it, so. Yeah, these places are cool though, I gotta say. I like this like cross way with the sidewalk sort of interesting sorry I'll try and keep this up in front of the camera so you can see I forget about that sometimes I'm shooting with a 20 millimeter 1.7 and I'm shooting at 1.7, which I don't actually need to be doing. Let's take that down to like F4. Yeah. That's probably too slow. Let's go 2.8. I am used to my Fujifilm, which has IBIS. This camera does not, so you have to keep my, an eye on my shutter speed. End up coming home with a bunch of very blurry photos, which is, which is no fun, so. I love these cacti. Things are so cool. I love these walkways. I do have to say, 
Oh, this one has a sign. That's cool. 1960 to 1964. I think some famous, famous people lived here. So maybe we can use this sidewalk as like a, to split this composition right down the middle. I think that kind of works. You know me, I'm always seeing if just getting low works. Nah, not for that one. We'll have to see how this unfolds. I'm not, I'm not entirely sure what I'm looking for in these compositions. I guess the same as, as always, good light, interesting colors, good compositions, but I'm not entirely sure what that means when it comes to a home. Oh, that's kind of cool. If I can get something in the foreground more here. I don't want to walk on their property, so. Yeah, that's cool. Let's get down to one, one seven, so we get those plants kind of blurred. Use those as a frame. Yeah, I'm kind of thinking maybe some of these need to be more sort of abstract, I guess. Just shapes, you know? I guess in a way, it's kind of what architecture is, right? Shapes and space, 3D shapes that create spaces, so. I do kind of wish I had maybe a 25 millimeter for this camera to shoot this stuff. Um, this lens feels a little bit limiting because I'm, st I'm stuck kind of out away from these things. I can't really get in close. And obviously I'm not gonna walk across people's front yards, so. But we will embrace the limitation and this is the only autofocus lens I have for this camera. Anyway, this is only a 16 megapixel camera and it's an old sensor now. I think this was the same sensor that went in the, the famous GH4, which was really popular for video. And, uh, but <laughs> honestly, this camera is like all plastic. It feels like a toy, but you can still take some amazing images with it. See if we can get a shot of this house with what little light we have. That was short lived. Oh, the turf between the concrete is really cool, though. That's really neat. Yeah, that's really cool. What was my shutter speed on that? 400, should be fine. Look at these cacti. catching that light. That's kind of cool. Oh yeah, good, good symmetry. Good symmetry in that photo. Yeah. 
Anyway, not the best low light camera perhaps, but um, short of that, um, I used to shoot with this thing exclusively for photos and video, and I loved it. You know, once you get some good images with an old camera and a 16 megapixel sensor, you, you start to realize how meaningless all the tech specs really are. It's just not what it's about. You know, all the new features and the newer cameras make things easier, sometimes more convenient, but they don't make better images. I guess technically better, but that's cool. If I can get this as like a kind of an abstract thing. Yeah, I kind of like all the all the shapes on that one. Tell you what though, no better way to spend a Sunday afternoon than just wandering around somewhere quiet, taking photographs. It's really relaxing. Oh, this is interesting. Man, these places are just designed like, I don't know. I think honestly the landscaping is such a big part of why this works. Like these places are just immaculate. Feels like a theme park or something. Yeah. And I love like the desert landscaping where there's not a lot of grass. It's mostly just rocks and desert plants and stuff. Really cool. Really cool. That one's not really doing it for me. This tree maybe? Oh, the tree's kind of cool though. The shutter on this camera sounds really weird. It keeps, it keeps making me think that I'm, my shutter speed's really slow or something. I don't know. It's not though. Make sure that this is doing what I expect. Yeah, it is. An aperture priority, 2.8. ISO 100. Let's go to ISO 200. Ooh, that door is neat. Super cool. Yeah, I love that. Wow. So in my photography, usually, usually I'm looking for like a really, really crisp, clear subject. And that's tricky with these because there's, it's a, a 40 millimeter equivalent focal length on full frame and um and i'm stuck to the street and there's you know, just a lot of items you know in these yards and stuff so it's it's challenging to try and get something that where you you know where, where to focus you know when you look at the image That's kind of cool. I guess I can get a shot like through their, through their doors. Something like that. I don't know if that's actually cool or not. Try it anyway. Ooh, cool door. And there's ni these nice contrasts in the rocks between the concrete. Can I get it in a way that works maybe maybe I'm kind of doing the same thing over and over here is just shooting these doorways but maybe that's not a bad thing maybe that's fine lots of symmetry to be had which if you watch my channel at all, you know I'm all about that. I have to wait for this car to pass. 
Ooh, I like all these browns. Yeah, all these trees, and the brown on the rocks. Lots of repeating colors here, which, which I'm totally into. But do we have a composition? Eh. Maybe. Maybe. I got these people right behind me who I'm trying to get away from so, so that I can keep recording and not have their conversation in my video. And then they keep following me. So <laughs> I guess I'll have to go back this way. I, uh, I had ambitions of walking through like two or three of these neighborhoods in here, but I think I'm going to run out of daylight before that is possible, unfortunately. Sun sets at 4.30 this time of year, which is, which is insane, but That's a, that's a good one. I like that. Hopefully I'm not clipping my highlights. I guess a little bit on these. Yeah, not really. Can I set this camera to underexpose? I'm sure you can. Um, I don't know if there's an easy way to do that. Ooh, ooh, look at this, look at this palace. Quite the. Quite the location. Not into this mailbox. That thing is, that thing is hideous, <laughs> but, but the house is cool. This might be neat because I might get my camera like kind of in the grass maybe. Yeah, but I think that kind of misses the point of the rest of the shot. We'll try it anyway. More. Symmetry. Oh no, it's way better. Way better that way. You'd also be surprised with this sensor, even though it's old and small. As long as you don't clip your highlights, your uh, dynamic range is not, not terrible. Not amazing, but surprisingly good. All right, let's head this way. And then That's kind of interesting. Yeah. Huh. All right. Um, I think I've captured most of the shots that I'm gonna get in this particular area. So I'm gonna jump in my car switch neighborhoods see if we can get some like uh maybe maybe blue hour photos i don't know we'll see how, how long the sun lasts of a few more places before i do that though um i just wanted to say a little bit more about the g7 since that's kind of what we were talking about today um you know i think this is the perfect Make sure my recording's still running. Yeah, it is. I think this is the perfect beginner camera. It's quite a bit older now. You can get these probably for very cheap on the internet. The sensor's much bigger than your cell phone if you're you know, looking to upgrade that. It's lightweight, so it's great for travel. 
it does feel kind of cheap and plasticky, but it's an absolute powerhouse in terms of like what it can do. And um, I feel like people generally think that in order to take a great photo, you need a expensive high-end camera and nothing could be further from the truth. Um, I've loved this thing. I don't really foresee myself getting rid of it anytime in the, the near future. You know, it's a, it was a $400 body when I bought it used. It's probably two or 300 now, $120 lens I bought used. And uh, hopefully as you've seen in this video, you can get some great images. So don't, don't be, don't be sucked into the trap of thinking you have to spend tons and tons of money in order to enjoy photography or increase your skills. It's kind of just like anything else. Once you kind of have the basic equipment, it's just reps and practice. And what you need to do is exactly what I'm out here doing today is going out and taking some photographs and, and hopefully taking some photographs that are you know new and different to you, forcing you to stretch those skills try new things so um if there's more after this then there's like a second part to this video <laughs> and, uh, and if there's not more after this then i just gave up and went home so uh yeah let's see what happens all right i decided to do a little more We're in a new neighborhood now different uh different kind of scene so let's see if we can get some more more photographs here man there's nothing better I think I think part of why I love photography is it gets you outside, gives you something creative to do, gets you walking. It's just a great combination. Um, man. I know this might sound stupid, but like if you're able to walk, don't take that for granted. It's like, it's such a gift to be able to just move your body around and it's not a given you can you can lose that When I, uh, speaking of walking, when I was a kid, I, um, I sat on this like retaining wall that was really old. I was talking to a friend of mine and uh, uh, the, the wall actually collapsed and I, I fell backwards and a bunch of these big railroad ties fell on top of me and um, kind of messed me up. I couldn't walk for a couple of weeks. And I just remember um, how, how dependent I was on everyone for everything and how much I missed just being able to jump out of bed in the morning and you know it sounds it sounds silly but so much of your life is just small things that you can that you can notice and appreciate more and I think that actually comes full circle into photography too here you're, you're learning to notice and to see things that you didn't see before and there's no end to it there's no point at which you are noticing everything or seeing everything it's just deeper and deeper and deeper and honestly I think I think life is that a little bit that way too there's no end to the amount of things you can appreciate like like walking it's just more and more of it but you have to choose to choose to look at it that way we could be happier I mean I can get very grumpy don't get me wrong <laughs> plenty of things to complain about but uh I think most of the time is a disservice to me. It's a cool front door. Not a great photo, but I think Taco Bell is in my future. <laughs> Sounds really good. 
not good for you, but it's kind of not the point. Yeah. Yep. I think that's a wrap. Look at the sky, though. I guess, I guess I'll, I mean, this is not a good photo, but you'll be able to see it better if I show you this. So pretty. All right, I'd like to thank you for joining me on today's photography expedition. Much appreciated. I think I'm gonna walk back to my truck, pack up my photo gear, and uh, go drink some Baja Blast. Take care. See you in the next one.